In this example, we're going to have to use the principle of mathematical induction. Now, in case you haven't seen this principle used before, I'm going to first state the principle and then explain how it works. So the principle says that if P of N is a statement, so maybe it's something like there exists a graph G of order N with a particular property, that's a statement that involves the integer N. Of course, there could be other statements that involve the integer N. You could think of many statements, and they might not even have to do with graph theory. Um, so P of N is just a statement, it involves the integer N. If the following is true, if the statement is true when the number n is 1 and also whenever the statement is true for n equal to k it must also be true for n equals to k plus 1. So if those two things are satisfied then you conclude that the statement is true for all integers n bigger than or equal to 1. And just in case you haven't seen this before let's think about why this would work. If you know that the statement is going to work for n equals 1, that's because of this part right here the statement is true when n equals 1. You also know that whenever it's true for n equals k, it's true for n equals k plus 1. So by this second piece right here, you can say, well, because it's true for n equals 1, that means it's going to be true for n equals 2. And you repeat. You say, well, now for n equals 2, it's true, which means that it's going to be true for n equals 3. So n equals 3 is taken care of, again, using this statement. And if you use k equals 3, you know it's true when n is 3, so it must be true when n is 4. And you can see that you can repeat this argument as much as you would like, so therefore it's always going to be true for n bigger than or equal to 1. That's how this principle works. So if you want to use this principle in practice, what you have to do is show that this component and this component hold. And if you can show that that holds, you can make the conclusion that the statement is true for all integers bigger than or equal to 1. And I should point out that choosing n bigger than or equal to 1 for this mathematical principle is not really necessary. We could have started at any place. So maybe you want to start at n equals 5 and this beginning part right here, maybe I'll use red to highlight this, this beginning part is called the basis. So I'll write it over here, that's called the basis it's the first case and it's not necessary that you start at 1 you might want to just start at n equal to 5 and then you also show that if it's true if n equals k works then n equals k plus 1 works and then you'll be able to make the conclusion conclude that for n bigger than or equal to 5 it will work Okay, so really it doesn't matter if you start at one or if you start at any other place, but the place where you start is called your basis. You have to check that it holds for the first place. And then this next part, this part here in yellow, showing that if it's true for n equals k, then it must be true for n equals k plus one. This is the induction step. Induction step. Okay, so there's two main parts to this principle. There's the basis part and the induction step. Now, not only is it unnecessary to start at integer 1, you could also consider proving statements on, for example, only the even integers. And maybe you want to start with n equal to 4. And then you want to say that if it's true for n equal to k, where of course now k is even, then it's true for, whoops, this should be an n, for n equal to k plus 2. Well, what are you really doing? This is now your basis. I'll highlight it in purple. This right here is the basis. And this right here, this part here, is the induction step induction step and what you're doing is you're saying okay well if it's true for n equals to 4 then by my induction step if it's true for 4 then it's true for 6 so okay 6 is done if it's true for 6 I use the induction step again now it's true for 8 and you can conceive now that it will be true for all even integers so mathematical induction is extremely powerful and it's a tool that's used often in mathematics 
what I want to do now is to do an example in graph theory which requires induction. Okay, so here is the example. It says, let n be bigger than or equal to 4 and it's an even integer. Show that there exists a three regular graph of order n. Okay, so it doesn't even tell you that you're going to need induction, but induction is actually the useful part here. So first of all, I want to point out that any three regular graph, any three regular graph must have even order. This is really just an observation and the reason why this is true is think about the fact that the sum of the degrees of all of the vertices in a graph is equal to two times the number of edges. We saw this already in a previous video and we know that this is an even number. What that told us was that there can only be an even number of vertices of odd degree of odd degree. And if you want a refresher on this, then you just watch the video again titled The Sum of the Degrees is Twice the Number of Edges. And then you'll remember that, okay, yeah, it's true, there is an even number of vertices which have odd degree. And in a three regular graph, every vertex has odd degree, so there has to be an even number of them. So that just eliminates the fact that you're not even going to look for an odd order one of these guys. Now the actual question is, show that for every even order one of these guys exists. So that's pretty hard because in general you might not know how to create one of these for n equals 10, for n equals 30, all these even integers. Like where are you going to create it from? So what you're going to do is start by creating a small one and then you're going to show the step how to create a bigger one just that's two more vertices bigger given that one already exists for a particular value. So let's go down and show how this would be done. Okay, so I'll use purple for the actual proof. The proof is going to have, first of all, a basis. Now the basis is n equal to 4 in this case, right? Because you're starting at n equals 4. And let's try to think of a graph that has four vertices and is three regular. Well, you don't have to think for too long before you realize that, okay, if it's three regular, every vertex has to have degree three, so it looks something like that. And then you have to add these edges and these edges. And you realize, okay, that was the complete graph on four vertices. So the basis is done. Now the way to proceed is what we need to do, we need to show we need to show that if there is a graph that is three regular of order, so of order k, where k is even, then there is a three regular graph, three regular graph of order k plus two. So this is the induction step. We need to show that if there is a three regular graph of order k, where k is even, then there will be the next one for k plus two, order k plus two. Okay, so the way we do something like this is we suppose that this part holds. Let me show you. We suppose that there is a graph that's three regular of order k, and of course k is even. We suppose this piece, and then we show that there must be then a graph that's three regular of order k plus two. That's exactly what we're going to prove here. So we actually have a special name for this, and we call this the induction hypothesis. And that is the part that's underlined in blue. So the induction hypothesis says, suppose, and I'm going to use this notation, that notation means there exists, suppose there exists a three regular graph G of order K where k is even.
<clears throat> okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take this three regular graph G and we are going to show that it can be manipulated in a certain way to produce another graph. So we're going to go from G, we're going to produce some other graph, we're going to uh, manipulate it somehow, manipulate until we get to a graph G prime and we want this one to be of order K plus 2 and it should also be 3 regular. That is the goal. And here's how you will achieve this. Well, you just let U be a vertex of your graph. So this is the graph that we have. It's 3 regular and of order K. So here's a vertex U. And since, since the degree of U is 3, we know that it has some neighbors. So it definitely has three neighbors. In fact, let's just only use two of them. And, uh, sorry, we'll say it has three neighbors. So let V and W be vertices of the graph, which are neighbors our neighbors of U. So it has three neighbors. We don't even need to use all three of the neighbors. We're just going to take two of them. In other words, we know that UV and UW are edges of our graph, right? U is adjacent to V and to W. Now, here's the big part we're going to do. We are going to construct, construct a new graph, G prime, from G, from G as follows. Well, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to tack on two new vertices. We are going to add two new vertices. And let's call these X and Y. Those are the new vertices. And this should help you because you now know that the number of vertices of your new graph is equal to the number of vertices of the old graph G plus 2, which is K plus 2. That's what we want. We want it to have order K plus 2. But now we need to manipulate, we need to construct this graph in a particular way so that not only do we add these vertices, but we change the edges so that it is still a three regular graph. So we have this vertex U. It's over here and it's in the graph G. And in G we know that there are, here maybe I'll draw this in a one. I'm going to put U here. I'm going to put V and W here, and I'm going to draw a bit of a circle here to represent the graph G. Okay, now the new graph G prime has everything that G used to have, but it also has two new vertices. So here's one of them, here's X, and here's Y. And now you're going to do something a little bit sneaky. In the graph G, you had this edge between U and W and also between U and V. But in the graph G prime, you don't want those edges. So these existed before in G, but you're going to remove them now in the graph G prime. So let's do that. Let's write that over here. We're going to take the edge set of G prime. So the edge set of G prime, it is the edge set of G but then we're going to remove some stuff. We're going to remove the edge UV and the edge UW. That's what I meant by making these dotted lines. So they're no longer there. Those edges are not part of our new graph. And now we're going to add in some new edges. So it's important to pay attention to what they are. The new edges are going to be like this. We're going to union some new edges. They are UX as well as VX, 
as well as xy as well as uy and finally v oh sorry I didn't mean v I mean wy okay let me make sure that's clear wy those are the new edges so you take the old edge set you remove this bit right here and then you add in some new edges and let's draw those the new edges go between u and x like that between v and x so that's this between x and y that's this and then u and y and w and y okay so that is our new graph. Our new graph has two new vertices, so its order is correct. The order is this. And now we've defined the new edge set of the graph to be everything that the graph used to have, except we're going to remove two things, this edge and this edge. And we're going to add in five new edges. They are all of these ones that I've drawn in blue. And what we want to do is just confirm that what we have is in fact a three regular graph. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you that it's three regular by checking, first of all, the vertex we added in that was X, it now has three edges incident with it. And it doesn't have any other edges because it's brand new and the only edges that are incident with it are the ones we've defined. Similarly for Y. Now let's take a look at vertex U. In the old graph, it had three neighbors. U had a neighbor V and a neighbor W and of course it had another neighbor but we never used that other neighbor before and we happened to remove two of its edges and replace by two more edges so it still has degree 3 so it's totally fine now let's take a look at vertex V well in the old graph G it had three neighbors so they were like this this and as well as vertex U and all we did was we removed one edge and replaced it with a different edge so it will still have degree 3 and similarly for W it used to have degree 3 and all we did was we removed it one edge and replaced it by another edge now of course this edge that we replaced it with is not going to mess up anything else in the graph because this was to a new vertex so again this vertex is also okay and those are the only vertices that we ever changed something for so we can still check that all the other vertices nothing's been changed for them and so they still have degree 3 and that means that G prime is a three regular three regular graph of order K plus 2 and so what we've done is we have taken the induction hypothesis which supposes that there's a three regular graph of order K where K is even and then we were able to show that if such a graph exists then there must be one of the next even order for K plus 2 so then what we can do is we can say therefore and this little symbol means therefore by whoops by the principle of mathematical induction by the principle of mathematical induction the result holds for even integers n bigger than or equal to 4 and the result is that there exists a three regular graph of order n for n bigger than or equal to 4 where n is even and we are finished the proof so we put our little square which is also another symbol that represents Q E D it's really a Latin phrase for quad erat demonstrandum which really means which had to be demonstrated so really it's indicating that you are finished with your proof and you have demonstrated that it is in fact true Hopefully you can follow all of the steps of this proof, and if it's your first time seeing mathematical induction, go over it a few times to make sure that it's clear.